Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, uh, full council uh, today, the uh, 18th of October. Mm -hmm. uh, just some health and safety introductions first. Mm -hmm. We're not expecting a fire drill, but if, if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit at the back of the chambers will take you across the roof and down the fire escape. Take care as this may be slippery if wet. Or you can exit the way you enter the building through the police station and out of the front door. If it's not possible to get to an exit, then the lift lobby is a safety zone in the event of a fire. Under no circumstances should you use the lift. Please make sure that all mobile phones and devices are switched off on, on silent. Any individual wishing to video or audio record the meeting may do so from the seats reserved at the front of the public gallery. I must inform you that this meeting is being videoed by the Council and will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube <coughs> channel. Please remember anyone wishing to speak in the public participation part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me as the chair to gesture for you to speak. You will be given a maximum of four minutes to make your representation, which should be aimed at me as the chair. Please state your... No, we don't do that now. Do we? Uh, through me as chair, council members or officers may then respond to your point if necessary. You will not automatically be able to reply unless I, as chair, allow you to do so. The full public partici participation policy and other helpful policies are available from the document holder in the public gallery. To all present, please remember to show respect to others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. Anyone present felt to be behaving unacceptably will be ejected from the meeting by the chair. Any member of the public looking to leave the meeting should wait for a council officer to escort them out of the building. Thank you. Um, at this point, if we can just have a moment's silence just to reflect on um, our thoughts for the meeting. His role is the Deputy Town Clerk uh, stroke RFO. Welcome. And also Isabel Morland, who's the, um, taking George's place um, while she's on maternity leave and is up on speaking of doing minutes. So, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Uh, item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. Mr Chair, we've got them from uh, councillors Goodman, White and Latham and also from the, the young mayor, Dominic Avery. Thank you. Uh, Two, disclosure of interest to deal with any disclosure by members of any disclosure pecuniary interests and interests other than pecuniary interests as defined under the Seaford Town Council Code of Conduct and Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Item 3, public participation, to do with any questions or brief representations from members of the public in accordance with Standing Order 3 and the Seaport Town Council policy. Right, so um, thank you. Just a point of clarification, please, Madam Chair. Um, I'm here about um, item 8, 
Will we get a chance to make um, um, some points on item A, which is the disposal of flashing from green or, or north way in your, your language, um, or do we need to raise it now? We need to raise it now, because once um, um, public participation is uh, over, then I can't accept any questions from the public. Okay. okay. Um, well, may I, may I kick off, please? Yes. Um, do, you, do you want me to stand Yeah, it is better because your yes. voice is better. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Tony Pitchharsh, um, and thank you for listening to me. Um, I'm one of several people here who are um, very concerned about what the council is doing about Flashington Green, um, or as in your language, North Way. Um, we believe that the decision that you took in October 2016 was, in, um, was flawed. In deciding that they wanted to dispose of the site, councillors didn't know the full facts about the site. And we as residents generally have a right to have our councillors, when they're deciding on sensitive matters like this, to be fully informed about all the factors. And we don't believe that happened. We believe failing to, to do so could amount to um, And I think the brief that you have at paragraph 1.7 actually admits this. And if you haven't read that, I can read that through. Um, the relevant bit is the second sentence of paragraph 1.7. These updates, that is updates on the sale of the land given by the town clerk have alerted council to issues that have arisen, such as the emergence of a Section 52 agreement. So it's quite clear councillors didn't know that there was a legal restriction on the land when they voted to dispose of it. It actually turns out that there are three separate approvals uh, that are required before the council can dispose of this land, um, and none of them are straightforward, and the, the residents who are concerned about it are likely to oppose these to the maximum extent they can. This is going to add to the delay of potentially a risk on the value of the site. And as a passing matter, um, we can't find any reference in the council minutes or the briefing papers to the council since 2016 that there was a formal raising of the, um, the fact that there are conditions on this piece of, piece of land. There's no reference at all. The town clerk has told us that um, members have been fully briefed, but we can find no formal record of that in your minutes or in your briefings. But it, it's a bit worse than that, I'm afraid. Because the council thought that it was easy to dispose of this land, I'm afraid you've gone ahead and you've um, committed expenditure and council officials' time um, on the disposal, and you also built a strategic plan based on the sale receipt for this land. And that seems to us to be actually foolhardy. So we can appreciate that the council is in a bit of a hole on this, because if you turn around and say, right, we're going to stop this now, there's going to be a charge of um, wasting money and wasting time. I'm here to say that we as residents are not going to be put off um, by being told that our objections are not valid. I'd like to make a couple of other points, please. Washington Green was taken over from a developer expressly for the comfort and enjoyment of the residents of the new Northway estate. The Section 52 was the normal mechanism at that time, the mid-80s, to achieve that. Lewis Council, who were the council in charge at the time, uh, actually took the Green in trust for the residents. You are now proposing to break that trust. That seems to us unacceptable. And many of the people who live around the Green have relied on, the, on that Green being an open space. And they're quite angry and upset about it. <coughs> the brief points out that times have changed, and indeed they have. Mm. But they've also changed in the fact that health authorities and, and the government stress that local green spaces close to work or to people's homes are vital for their health, mental and physical. The district council has got policies committed to keeping green spaces 
and it is not fair, simply not fair, to degrade Northway residents' standard of living to allow visitors to have a more comfortable pee on the seafront. The council... Are you fine because the four minutes is nearly up, so... I'll just... make one very brief point, if I may be, Madam Chair. Um, the council has, has justified its action by inventing an implausible scenario that the green <coughs> must be turned into a specific kind of play area with play equipment. <coughs> But then it says, alas, regulations don't allow them to do that, so the, the site must be sold. Actually, we think that's poppycock. Children and adults can play and rest in any green space, as they do here. And they've done that for the last 35 or so years, 30 to 35 years. They don't need swings and, and, and all the sort of fancy kit. What they need is an area to exercise in. I'll, I'll leave it at that, if I may, thank you. My name is Joan Fass, and I've lived in the Lighthouse Fall Road next to Blackstreet and Green for over 20 years. I support everything Mr Titchpals has said, and I would like to make three points in addition. One, the proposed development locks access to our rear garden, which is the five foot wide gate. There to gain access since it was built in 1963. We have signed statements which prove at least 40 years continuous use and we are taking legal steps now to protect our entitlement to access and block the development. The council should note that the town clerk said at one of the consultation meetings that access would not be affected and clearly it is. The planned house on Tufel Road next to ours is wrongly positioned several metres in front of the building line and removes the only lay-by on the single track road, which was insisted on by the planners when Abundant Grace Home was built, and this will cause traffic problems. The rear of the larger house has planned extends no further than the length of our conservatory. This is very small and out of keeping with the houses on Full Road. It is even smaller than the adjacent garden on North Way. The space behind has two further houses planned with tiny gardens, no garages and a shared driveway onto North Way, which is not only out of keeping with North Way properties, but is an over that would create parking problems in the future. I urge the councillors to reconsider this whole approach. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Pam Titchmarsh. The petition submitted by residents of the North Way Estate raised legitimate concerns about the council's proposal to sell Blatchington Green for development and asked that the council withdrew its planning applications. By seeking to hide behind a flawed petitions policy, councillors are denying residents the right to make representation on issues that concern them. Other local authorities, including Lewis and Eastbourne, welcome petitions from their residents and state that they will consider them if they have more than 10 signatures. What makes Seaford so special that it appears to set the bar so high? Councillors took the decision to sell the land to help fund the strategic plan two years ago without the full facts before them. It was only after the initial planning application for development of the site was submitted to Lewis District Council in November 2017 that the town clerk was told by residents that he had missed a trick. He was unaware of the extant Section 52 agreement. There is no evidence that he informed councillors about that, but pressed ahead with applications for the site and expenditure on associated projects. There are three applications currently with Lewis District Council, none of which have yet been listed for hearing, and indeed the application to reroute the footpath has not even been consulted on. That is fundamental to the development plans. Councillors are keen that the Martello toilet should be completed in time for summer 2019.
but with the applications on which sale of Blatchington Green depends still some time away from resolution, it seems unlikely that the site will be sold in time to ensure realisation of the council's aspiration for the seafront redevelopment. It's about time councillors woke up to that fact and sought alternative means to fund their plans. The council has never published a list of alternative sources of funding, but they should include the receipt from sale of the land at the Holt, which was sold 18 months ago for £170,000, and any profit from sale of the beach huts. Leave the site at Blatchington Green for the purpose for which it was intended, an open space to be used in perpetuity as a play and recreation area. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this, uh, um, people speaking on this, if you are adding something new to what has already been said, it would be to help to cut down the time. Have you know, a comment on the neighbourhood <coughs> plan? Now the right time? Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? I'm on the North Bay, I want to speak on the neighbourhood plan. Okay. Um, anybody else on North Bay? Yes, sir. You want me to speak now? Yes, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll be brief. My name is Richard Fowler. I live uh, next door but one to the green itself. I've lived there for about 25 years and I've brought up two children in that time along with my neighbours doing the same thing. Um, I'm, I'm not going to repeat what my, my neighbours have said, I agree with everything they've said. But this issue about the play area, I, I am concerned overall that council members are being misled in this report by inaccurate information from the town clerk. He's just made statements and I'll give you some examples to qualify what I've just said. Um, for example, when he says things like uh, in paragraph 117, uh, it's only ever used as a cut through. It's clearly not true. My children have played there many times for long periods while I've been outside in the road cleaning the car and things like that, as have my neighbour's children. Um, in paragraph 115, it says of no notable natural value. Well, that's in entirely subjective, isn't it? I completely disagree with you there but it's not really a, an important point, I don't think, anyway. Okay, so I, I don't, you know, I'll finish there, but I, don't, I, don't, I want to make sure that the council members are not being misled by inaccurate and false statements in the town clerk's report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is done, if you could uh, speak about... Yeah, sorry, Bruce. It, it, it will add, it's adding, not repeating. Um, I have played a gender right to my open say. And I think it's if the report is misleading. Firstly, it has a district wide policy on it of an RE1 or a CP8, known as green infrastructure. Yes, it does have a section 52, which was the Town and Country Planning Act of 1971, but which is now referred to as a section 106 because the Act was revived in 1990. Furthermore, there are 27 constraints on the land, including a two metre buffer on the right of way and an SSSI impact risk zone of sites of special scientific interest. The review group of the neighbourhood plan put under the LGS local green spaces put this site and many like it under what is known as green corridors or informal green spaces known as greenways. Seaford does lack that considerably <laughs> under Lewis District's standard policy. And they do need protecting, but not under saved green spaces. Also, the review group's LGS saved and protected all 66 sites, unlike the LGS that is being presented to the council this evening. This brings me on to the agenda item nine. This is moving on to the neighbourhood plan. I know you need to approve these documents to move on to regulation 14, which needs to be done again, but the existing steering group is not holding it in public. You will need to com a computer to access the four large documents. So how is that involving all the residents? Uh, there have been two meetings held, but no minutes have been shared with residents who cannot attend the meetings. Many residents feel isolated from the decisions being made on the plan and may not vote for it should it get to that stage. I feel Regulation 14 needs to be held in public, otherwise it's not a fair consultation. Thank you. So, my name is John Rigdon, I'd like to speak about the neighbourhood plan. Um, I am concerned that there's 184 units required 
and of that, 131 are in the Dean Valley. Um, that is owned by 12 different people, and there's five other splinter groups to that. So making a decision is going to be very difficult. There's archaeological problems, flooding, the gas services to the old gas works are still there, so the properties. And the constructions of roads are difficult because they're not wide enough. The sewage problems, because the sewage pumps are over 40 years old, it's going to be horrendous to try and build it. And to coordinate all of that, the 12 to an owners, I would say, be virtually impossible. Now, some of the other sites in the plan have been put down by the owners, clearly to keep their options open if they <coughs> sell the land in the future. They're not going to intend to develop them straight away. And the backup plan to me appears to be developing in the National Park land along Grand Avenue, which I know is very controversial, and it seems to me to make a mockery of designating land as a national park. If people buy properties next to a national park because of that, and then find it's taken away. Um, I want to place on record that despite having offered to the council to give the western half of my site in Surrey Roads to them, which has got a pond on it and could be of nature interest to the SSI and the opposite side of the railway track. Um, the eastern side of my site is classified as a brown site, brownfield site, capable of accommodating up to 50 homes, all under one ownership and all deliverable immediately the decision is made. This is not being considered and the area is being classed as local green space to stop it being developed, which is not allowed within the plan. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kate Richardson, I'm a resident of Seaford and a current licensed trader at the Seaford Promenade by Frankie's Kiosk. I want to talk um, about my issues um, under Section 10 here, the Seafront, seafront Development Plan. Um, I want to raise my concerns about the trading agreements and the proposed huts um, from which to trade from. I'd like the council officers and councillors involved in the planning of trading and to consider these following points. Firstly, I've been trying to renew my licence agreement since February earlier this year and I've had um, inconsistent responses about being allowed to continue. At the end of my initial licence in July, a short extension was granted until the end of August and then at the end of August, James has kindly assured me that there's no intention to remove existing traders from the beach. Now the my problem is, I've only been given a short term extension to April, and therefore have absolutely nothing official to make me feel safe that I can stay. Um, and I'm still, I still don't know if I can continue to make a living before, and I'm unable to develop and plan for my business future. I found this to be incredibly stressful and I need a formal document clearly stating that I can remain long term trading on the beach, whether or not the proposed beach huts go ahead. My second issue is the apparent intention to only have the huts to trade from through the summer. I've managed to do good trade through the autumn, winter and the spring, as there are several holidays and celebration for days through the winter that locals and tourists wish to buy gifts for. Therefore, I've asked you to also consider continuing to now trade all year round, including when the huts are dismantled for maintenance if they do ever appear. Thirdly, if these huts do go ahead, they need to be affordable to our small traders who make far less than the previous sessions. And lastly, I'd like to say that the initial agreement has worked really well for me, and the lady who also has a store. And it, I think it's been a really positive initiative developed by the council, which in my experience both locals and tourists are enjoying. And it's also been a source of revenue for the council that requires absolutely no work on your part and no cost to you. So I'd like you to consider uh, the huts viable or would we be better to carry on as we are. Thank you. I'm able to get a response on the contract to some of the sort of comments made by the, 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 the lady. Mm. Um, the Seaford Development Plan is, I think, one of the points that was made is the reason we've said to take away the, uh, the beach huts uh, for trade in this winter is that we didn't anticipate people would want to use them. Um, if somebody was to request to keep them there and obviously rent them, I can't see any reason why we couldn't leave. 
the ones there that people want, but take the rest away. Um, that, that's not an issue, I don't think. Um, you'd have to suck it and see as well to see how that works, because we've got to bear in mind the weather conditions. Um, the, uh, the, the, the issue with not feeling safe in short term is, unfortunately, that's part and parcel of being a concession. And that applies to everybody who has a concession on the seafront. Um, there's none of them have got the uh, open-ended agreement to be there ad infinitum, even those that have um, uh, tens of thousands of pounds to be there uh, and not there forever. Um, so we can't say to somebody who's paying significantly less than that, guarantee you can be there forever because that sets a precedent we can't keep with everybody else and undermines the process of going to tender for concessions as well. Um, so we have to be even handed with everybody and some of those concessions have been operators' concessions on the sea for 20, 30 years on that basis. So it would be unusual and uh, it would certainly undermine the finances of the whole sea for it if we did give people preferential treatment over others. Um, the, I think that really answers the, the main points and, and I think a lot, a lot of the rest will come up in the, probably on the discussion around the uh, sea front development improvement plan when we get to that. Uh, and I propose just a slight amendment to the financial um, minutes. We agreed at a recent meeting with the chairman's group that we would change one of the dates on the 17th of January to the 10th for the working group for the budget. So the date that was published has actually been changed to the 10th. Thanks for coming here. Subject to the council being happy with that change. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I'm happy to note the uh, clock for the minutes, which is on your agenda. Right. I see, Manager. It's regarding uh, 18 for a rod. The application for the um, um, building of the rear of 18 furlough, which is on uh, page 15 of your agenda. Um, <coughs> with regards to backland development, and it wasn't clearly minuted that was, I was the only counter to vote against it. It was tipped in the balance. Yes. And that was not correct. It was a majority decision to vote in favour of it, and I was the only uh, counter to vote against it. And it's quite important to the residents who live next door to the uh, full world development. Chair, just, just to explain our marriage policy, we don't record uh, unless it's a recorded for that's requested. Okay, I should have, yeah. I, I very kind yeah. um, yeah. uh, council, I should have suggested uh, a recorded for yes. yeah. that. Okay, I do, do yeah. apologise, sir, Chair. I'm sure. okay. and town clerk, Okay. All noted. Yep. Okay, so uh, on to agenda item five, uh, civic uh, update report on pages 26 to 29. And uh, to note the report, unless you've got any questions. Excuse me, is it possible you could speak up? Yes, sorry. We're sorry. just hearing a mumble. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Uh, we're just doing agenda item five, and the councillors have noted the uh, Mayor's update report, and uh, the young Mayor isn't here tonight to give a verbal report. So we're moving on to agenda item six, the clerk's report on pages 30 to 36. Thank you, Chair. Um, just, just like to emphasise a, a few points uh, in the report, Chair. Um, as councillors will be aware, we have been dealing with caravans again on the seafront. Um, of course, we can only deal with them when they're on our land. I am aware that some new motorhomes have appeared in the last uh, few days. 
uh, but they are on the highway, they're taxed, they're insured and tested, so therefore they, they are able to stay where they are. Um, but we did uh, move uh, the caravans that were at um, Cliff Gardens to uh, the lay-by in the 259. As councils are aware, they were two homeless people given the caravans by a local charity, um, and, and they are from Seaford. Um, that seems to have worked. Uh, we, we did have a few initial concerns about that, uh, but there hasn't been any incidents, uh, so touch wood, that seems to be working. Um, we, we have got an updated position statement on Talent Parade. Uh, we do continue to get queries about that, unsurprisingly. Uh, the, the website has got more up-to-date information on that. Uh, there is working on site at the moment, although not many, uh, admittedly. Um, the, the town's had a few good, uh, positive um, features in local uh, press of late. Uh, we were featured in The Guardian and in The Telegraph as um, is, is uh, great beaches to visit and uh, within that the, the um, concessions, uh, the new concessions were all highlighted as being uh, positive features. Um, we also get lots of many compliments about uh, the golf quality of the golf course. Uh, just received some more tonight when I was on the seafront and similarly uh, the view is uh, getting a lot of positive feedback as well which is uh, very pleasing. Um, we, we recently did a uh, a visit with Sussex Life, who followed the mayor for the day, and the high sheriff. Um, that will appear in the uh, the next publication, and we're probably going to have another feature in the one after that as well. Uh, we've got that much material from the, the day following the mayor and the um, We have had a few changes in staff, as mentioned again, the meeting by the mayor. So Colin Andrews has recently joined us, um, and as has Izzy Mullins, uh, both settled in really well. <coughs> Um, that means that Karen is uh, leaving, who is our consultant at uh, RFO, uh, and Georgia will be starting the turn and leave uh, probably at the end of next week. Um, we expect that to be the time. Uh, we've had uh, Joe Whitcomb doing some casual work for us at the view, which has been really useful, getting the systems in place there. Um, sadly, the head, deputy head greenkeeper has left uh, to take up a head greenkeeper post, which is um, career progression for him. Um, it was really uh, pleasing to have him come in for his, um, since this was written, his exit interview. Uh, and during that he, he emphasised um, you know, how pleased he was with the support he was given by the council that he uh, and how much he's learned from being here and what a good employee we've been. So really positive feedback from him. Um, the team are doing really well with grants. We've got quite a few going at the moment. Um, we've got one for Christmas Magic, we've got something in for Sport England. Uh, so we, we pretty much with more of those, although uh, organising Christmas magic takes up a lot of time in that team at the moment. The finances of the view have done really well, we've had some exceptional months, uh, the three best months we've had since opening, uh, so that's done really well. Um, it was interesting to find out recently as well that the town council is now the, the eighth biggest uh, local council in the country in terms of its budgeted income of 2.3 million. Uh, interestingly, only 730,000 of that is from taxpayers. Um, the, the majority comes from, from commercial generated income. Um, equally, the, the Band D tax level in Seaford is one of the lowest in the country for the size of council. It's £73.14 compared to the highest, which is £306. Uh, the highest in, in Lewis District is over £200. Um, we, we've Managed to get a lot of other work done lately. There's a lot of work going on with leases, um, the capital land projects, which we talk about later in the agenda. Litigation, I'm pleased to say one of the litigation matters is now uh, finished, uh, leaving just the one outstanding matter uh, in relation to Herder's house. The neighbourhood plan has progressed really well, thanks to the volunteers who have done an amazing job with that. And we'll talk about that later. Um, we we also finally got one of our strategic objectives in, which was the new Brown Sign Scheme. That's all being put in place, which is uh, really good. And uh, we did enter the National Council of the Year, whilst we went shortlisted, I think, the, uh, the um, putting together the programme of what we've done in the last year was really enlightening, and that's included in the report. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, councillors may have, Chair. Madam Mayor, could I ask that the council record a vote of thanks to Karen Singleton for the work that she did as RFO? Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you. Um, following on from Councillor Brown, um, I do recall talking to um, Carol Singles before she left, and I think she made some more observations as to the fact that the finance in the, in, in the council. I thought I remember talking to her about having a format whereby all our reports do include the, the effect on the police sector. I found that so much of that line. But my question is, would be, I don't know if you've spoken to her before she left. Um, do we have some um, our, our, any recommendations which she's got for the council? Um, but in terms of, of our working procedure to, to, to place, and because I, I, mean, I know she has, so I, mean, I, so I, so I did talk to her, but I'm, I'm not sure if you did talk to her formally, and, and to see how we can put this in, in, into place, or at least pass that according to to, to, put, to put into place. If you have, if you have done that now, are you able to contact her to say, look, because um, I think it's, it's, it's normal if you have a consultant with was with us for a long time to say to her, look, what do you think about of our, of our, of our working procedure? Is there anything that we can improve and give us some recommendations, please? So I think it'd be nice to, to make contact with that, to find out from that, give her anything that, she, any, any suggestions she needs, and then pass that out to Colin as well. Yeah. Um, um, thank, thanks for that. Yes, okay. I, think, I think we can answer that quite easily. Okay. Uh, Karen has got one day left with us, okay. which is uh, Friday next week. Um, and she will be spending time with Colin that day, so that's something we can discuss with her on that day. Excuse me, by the way, I've just lost my, I just lost my train of thought. That's right. I just come back. I've got my question. Thank you. Councillor Bowman. Thanks, Chair. I've just received a mail of apology from Councillor Webb. So we can make that case in Sucking Land. I think we were trying to see him to do some incident earlier. Um, and just one for the town clerk, really. Um, in the report, I'm going to mention for this um, 1.32, the Capital Lands Project, would you still say that that's something um, that is already now in the report? Is that still what you class as valid for the council to? As Sorry, we, 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 we've written down quite a bit there on the capital lanes projects, and obviously we've heard from the residents that we still stand by um, what you presented to the council with that, so you can see the council is understanding. Yeah, I think um, we can certainly discuss in detail uh, North where when we get to the item, uh, but certainly uh, councillors have been aware of the 52 agreement once it was put on the website by the district council. Uh, the, the issue was the district council weren't aware of it when we initially made inquiries of them. Uh, when we were progressing with the plan, it was then brought to their attention by residents and then appeared on the website. And at that point, we made councillors aware of it. Um, we can discuss it in detail. The, the 52 agreement is, is probably the strangest one I've ever seen because it isn't actually a public open space or a public play area. It's just for 21 houses, the residents of 21 houses and no more. Uh, those within the red marker on the plan. That's what the agreement says. There's a copy of that with all the councils that can make their own decision on that, but it clearly states that in the agreement. My question was regarding 1.31 releases. Again, I didn't recall at a previous meeting uh, asking, because uh, I think there have been instances in the past where some organizations um, haven't had their list renewed or they've been stumbling blocking the list has been renewed. And I believe that there is a database of leases as well when they become renewed. And I think I did ask that, can we be, members be made, made informed um, of, so, just that, so we know when this is our due? Maybe, maybe once a year, please, it would be nice to be so that we can be made aware of that. Because people who come to us in our work and say, it's a problem with the use. Sometimes, they didn't, they, they, we, as councillors, we hear about it when it's quite late. But now it's also to know in advance so that we can actually get involved in this issue and this result. Is that, yeah. is that, is that possible? Um, the the is, issues around GDPR and that, we need to, before I give an answer to that, I need to, to look at that. Um, just to make sure we're not breaking GDPR. Sorry, that's just before we came back to me also. Obviously, when we set out the green uh, charts and the uh, See by the version of time first and what they for us. Um, it wasn't just on capital land projects that we were um, going to get revenue for, it was going to be a big chart sold um, to pull that. So, on the <coughs> sold 10, but how far away capacity wise are we from achieving that money that we need? To? Well, that's it covered in the sequence improvement plan that we're generating later on in the agenda. Um, so, the income from the beach at so far, we sell them for roughly 40 because VAT to pay on that. So the income from beach up sales is... You were told that they weren't compatible initially, but was it cool? Um, well, no, we, we didn't have the information on that originally, but we, we 
and we said we'd check on that, and we did, and we do have to pay back on them. Oh. So the sales. Um, yeah, I remember one of our former colleagues um, pointing that out to us in the office back. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank
four points really. Um, today, uh, Gatwick Airport um, unveiled their master plan for ongoing development and sustainable growth, um, which sets out the, how the airport will um, counter the growing demand for air travel and address its growth opportunities for the economic effects in uh, East Sussex. Um, the travel of the, uh, the surveys on Exit Bridge have uh, started early on this week and uh, will continue until November the 2nd, I believe. I know there's been a few social media reports about that, and um, it's awkward. Um, but obviously that is underway, and the uh, objective is to have a, um, an agreement at some point with South Downs National Park Authority, um, and hopefully we'll get the, get the much needed uh, dual bridge there. Um, and then to end on a happy note, we have the music service. We've had a lot of uh, complaints about because that's been saved um, for the foreseeable future, which is really good for these young people in the town. So, just one other thing that I've just remembered, I've had a lot of um, in, uh, contact from residents that live up in the uh, area by Cone Hill School and was complaining about the traffic flow movements at school times and uh, I went up there yesterday to visually see what was going on and I've contacted the school now and working on a travel plan um, with, with the school so um, that's going to be hopefully the congestion around that with the school times. So that's what I've got to do. Thank you. Could I ask Councillor Bowman what's happening about the A259, particularly around Hill Rise and um, uh, the area where you live in as well? There's been three fatalities down there in the last couple of years, and I think we should do something about it. Thank you, Councillor Brown, for the question. Um, unfortunately, that's not the part that I represent. Obviously, I will have that looked into, but you do need to contact Alan in hand. But, um, but if you can't get hold of then please do email me and come back to me on and uh, yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, we go on to agenda item 8, and uh, this is to bring to the attention of the Council a petition in value of brackets uh, which has been submitted to the Council with regards to North Bay. Chair, thank you. Um, I think we all, all members have had a copy of the, uh, the report, and, and this was. Uh, something we consulted on as part of the neighbourhood plan consultation and uh, received 59% um, in favour of sale. Um, the 41% uh, against. Um, Council has not been updated on this continuously throughout uh, with, with the Clark's reports, uh, made aware of some of the issues raised before the meeting started. Um, the, uh, a lot of the information that's in here is not, uh, despite the accusations of the enemy, is not uh, information I've secured myself, it's come from from people uh, who've given us the information, including councillors, um, and from, from the use of the park in the, or the area, from uh, people who live in the area as well. Um, we obviously received a petition now, but um, as members are know, this, this is a strategic objective to, to sell this land following the, the initial consultation. Um, the, the Section 52 agreements, as I alluded to earlier, did emerge uh, late in the day. I believe as a result of one of the residents contacting the planning department at Lewis who then located it and put it on their website. It wasn't there initially when we did our original sweep of the website and talks, uh, discussions with planners. Um, the 652 agreement does designate it as a children's play area, not a green space or anything like that that um, has been mentioned. Um, and it does specifically say that it is just for residents of 21 houses that are within the red land. Um, you know, that, that's very clear from the agreement, uh, and I'll let the members make their own mind upon that, it's uh, attached as an appendix. Um, the, uh, the current le uh, legal use of the land is, it would be as a children's play area, it mentioned play equipment. Um, the five metre boundary recommended by Rosper and uh, other um, play providers advisory groups it doesn't just apply when you have children's play equipment, it does apply to any play area. There should be a five metre peripheral around the play area, whether it have play equipment in it or not, which is clearly impossible in this space. The, the space was created at a time, if it was a new development, now this couldn't be uh, allocated as a children's play area. It, it wouldn't be lawful to do so. Uh, the planners would quite rightly go back and say you need to provide us with a bigger space. Um, it has had no, no ball games up for, for decades, we haven't had exactly sure on the exact dates, but uh, we are aware from offices of the District Council that was a result of a request from residents. 
Um, and it, for a children's play area, there's no bench. It seems inconceivable that parents would have the children play there without being able to sit down. Um, the council are minded to uh, make uh, sell it. So if, if this was um, to be happening, of course, some of the proceeds, which is approximately half a million, would go to the seafront toilets, as being raised uh, earlier by councillors, but equally, uh, sorry, by members of the public, but equally, it would go towards the children's play areas in the area uh, near Northway, which is down at uh, Norman, uh, Norman so. Um, those children's play areas are far more suitable and can be made uh, into uh, modern day standard children's play areas, which is the intention and what we're working on with a plan at the moment with the district council with a view to that being adopted by the council early in its next uh, term of office so that they can be improved and some of these funds will be able to help achieve that to secure match funding. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, we, we've been successful getting grants but we do need much funding to, to corn feed those grants. And so money that we raise from this sale, 25, 50,000 could easily raise uh, four or five times that amount that we spent on children's play equipment. Um, I think that covers everything. I'm happy to answer any questions on, on the, uh, the report. Uh, but as I've mentioned, I brought this as a courtesy really. Uh, I wasn't obliged to bring the council's attention because it didn't meet the minimum criteria for a petition. Um, but I did agree to do so as a courtesy to the residents who had made the effort to put the petition together. Um, I think just one last thing. I, the irony of ironies, of course, is that the, the petition is to save Blatchett and Green. Blatchett and Green is already being built on by the residents who are petitioning. Uh, Blatchett and Green wasn't the bit of land that's North Way, it was the whole of the estate where North Way is built on. So Blatchett and Green is well beyond saving. Uh, so why is the section built to the two? Sorry, um, don't interrupt uh, town clerk and members of the public cannot speak. Now we're in, in debate on this subject. You had your chance earlier, sorry. Um, sorry. It's alright, I think that's it, uh, Chair. So um, it is it is the same matter for the, the Council. Um, but the recommendation is to take no action. Um, to take any action would result in having to review the, the council's uh, strategic plan and probably withdraw on most of the projects. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've listened very carefully to the comments made by the residents. Um, can I just address sorry, one factual incorrect, incorrect fact, which is that Louis District Council um, has um, a much higher threshold. For, uh, um, on, this petition, on, this, on this petition policy than sit for town council, because I'm a district council, district council council and I know that for a fact. So that, that's not actually factually correct. Um, I, it is a, this is a difficult one because I think as councillors we've, we, in, over the last two years, we've um, been kept up to date and been informed by the town clerk of what's been happening. This, this, yes, this part of land is complicated. And many of the issues that, that are raised today are really literally planning decisions that and, and these are decisions, decisions that can be made by the planning authority um, if there is an issue with uh, section uh, section 52 if there is an issue with um, the right of right of way i think um, to, to 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 your back garden access to your back garden these again are issues that are planning issues and can, can be raised with the planning authority um, as the landowner the question we've got today is do we want to sell this parcel of land um, and is there anything that's been said today that would make me change my mind? No. Um, yes, yes, there are issues. Yes, there are there are issues that need to be addressed. But these are issues that need to be addressed with Louise District Council when it comes to the planning application. And as she said, there are three applications be before Louise District Council. So residents have got literally three opportunities to stop this from going through if they, if you strongly believe that that's the right way forward. But I do think as a councillor, we have to make tough decisions sometimes. And we have to decide on things. And as, and as we've seen, um, when we're talking about the, the neighborhood plan, when it comes to selling land and building properties, there is going to be always be someone for and against. It's always going to be the case. Uh, I've been a councillor for 10, 8 years now, and I know on every piece of land, there's always been someone for, there's always been someone against it. But we have to do what we think is right for the town. Uh, and I, I believe that this is right for the town. It's not something I, I, I've okay. chosen to, to, to do. Tally, um, um, easily, but I think as the councillors, we have to decide what's right for the town that we live in. And I think what is right for the town that we live in is that we've got this piece, this piece of land that is unused right now. 
that we can be used as, um, as um, a, a capital visit to actually help develop our town, to, 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 to provide much needed amenities. As the town clerk said, this could be used to, 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 um, to, to, to fund, to part fund a play area in the town. So I do, I hope, I hope, I hope my colleagues will support my proposal, which is that we take no action, we go ahead with the proposal <coughs> to sell the land and let the let Louis District Council, let Louis District Council decide if they do believe, because at the end of the day, this university council will make an impartial decision and they can address all the issues regarding section 52 being whether, whether that, that needs to be kept or that, no, that, that shouldn't be kept. I'm not a planner. I, 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 I don't think that, that's, an, that's not an issue for us today. The issue for us should be do we want to sell the land in principle? Then let's go ahead and do that. And I think in principle, I'm in favor of selling the land and I hope I will get second after my motion. Well, Thank you, Chair. And being such a contentious issue, is there any chance we can relax the rules to let have a little bit more of a I'm interested in a bit more of a conversation here between the public. Is that possible? No, I, I just would really like to um, support Sam in what he said. I think we have been kept fully informed. We made an informed decision a while ago. There have been alterations, but it hasn't materially uh, changed out what we thought at the time. Um, as you say, I'd, in an ideal world, we wouldn't want to get rid of any little bit of green space or grass. But I'm afraid that you know it has come down to that. And looking at where it is, there are alternative um, green spaces very nearby. <laughs> yeah, exactly the same feeling as Sam with the second proposal and that, and yeah, it yeah, is unfortunate, but this town will always flow. Eventually, it will be built on green sites, and, and unfortunately, that's something we've just got to accept. You know? So, yeah, I quite um, agree with um, what the council needed to say. Um, it's not for us to be deciding that, and we should move forward. Obviously, if things come to light later on, it comes back to the council and we'll deal with it accordingly. And that we're in with position. So, but it isn't the end of the land sale. You know, the land sales are the only option we have as a council anyway. As we said earlier, we have got other options in terms of other sales going through to sustain so, so, I actually agree with the residents because I was up there and it feels so very, very strong. This small piece of green land, which in actual fact, we look at on. Um, Google map is so small, it means nothing. It means a lot to the residents. Mm. I don't mean so much to the town council, but I have to say, being a, a council in the north of Seaford, I have to come down on the side of my constituents, and I'll be voting against it. Thank you. Okay. Is there a bit of the possibility of just building one house, something a bit less controversial, because like a compromise maybe? Um, Has that been looked into? No, I think um, the, the, the decision of the council is to sell in the site for, for development to maximise the income. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the less that it's developed, we could have could have proposed flats and it would have been more uh, on value. <laughs> Um, we didn't. We proposed something that was more in keeping with. Yeah. That's a planning consideration. As, as a lot of the issues raised tonight, that is a material planning consideration. Which, if the planners decided it is more developed, then it did. We felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I've got proposal to Councillor Brown. Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. I do understand where the uh, residents are coming from, and in every planning application there's found to be some for and some against, and some people will be upset, and I do understand that. However, I would like to point out that Council has already voted on this matter, and the previous Council has been in the group to say that that land, and we can't go back on that decision uh, for at least another six months or so. Thank you. Right, I've got a proposal by Councillor uh, Adam Eadry that we take no action, seconded by Councillor Elton, no sorry, seconded by Councillor Borman, sorry, put the word. Can I ask for a recorded vote? Yes. 
Okay, so I will just uh, go through, uh, if you could just say for or against the proposal, uh, which is to take no action. Uh, so I'll just go through an alphabetical order. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, I beg your pardon, yeah, for, against, or abstain, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll start in alphabetical order. Uh, Councillor Adonijee? I'm for. Councillor Argent? For. Councillor Borman? For. Councillor Brown? For. Councillor Burchard? For. Councillor Beth, it was not here. Councillor Elton, Councillor Lindsay Freeman, Councillor Nick Freeman, Councillor Ranu Maheda, Councillor Olivia Honeyman, Councillor Richard Honeyman, Councillor um, Lord, no, against, yeah, yeah, yeah. Councillor Lower. Oh. Councillor Walraven. Oh. Councillor Williamouth. Against. Councillor. So it's not here. She's not here. Okay, that's carried. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three against. And two absent. So that's carried. So that's Council 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 that is on page 54. Thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank um, all the volunteers who uh, helped get the neighbourhood plan at this stage. That includes some of the people in the room who are no longer with the neighbourhood plan, but have <coughs> certainly contributed a lot. Um, there's, there's been a lot of people helped a lot um, throughout the development of the plan and uh, put in an incredible amount of work um, with the volunteers for this plan. Um, as you can see from the report, Chair, and the, the support and documentation, we are ready to go to um, Regulation 14 again. Um, we have worked very closely with the volunteers, <coughs> the steering group, uh, also AIRS and um, ACOM as well in developing the uh, proposals at Dane Valley, um, which, which is the, the backbone of the housing allocation for the neighbourhood plan, but not to the extent highlighted earlier. Um, I think what I would suggest, Chair, is um, I, I'm not going to claim to be the expert uh, on, on the neighbourhood plan because I haven't put in the hours that uh, other people have. If the Council have any questions on the neighbourhood plan, that you, you allow the Chair and the support to, to answer those as a Council. I think we did that before in suspended standing orders to allow that to take place. Um, and, but, but I don't have to answer any questions, I can, but I would uh, defer to, to the Chair and advisor at the back of the room at the moment, Chair. Do you see how we go? I think you could, yes. you could propose to uh, set aside standing orders um, to allow that to, to take place. Councillor Brown. Yeah. Can I propose that we temporarily suspend standing orders to allow discourse with the members of the neighbourhood planning team and reinstate it immediately after? Certainly. Okay. Can I suggest that this is uh, time restricted, so time restrained, please maybe so do it for 15 minutes or so. We don't want to be here yeah, in one hour's time. Yeah, time limit on it. Okay. Um, Councillor Brown. Yeah. Can I show a hands up you've agreed to accept this proposal? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to query um, 1.4, additional housing sites at the Downs, with the proposals that have been widely seen recently. Is that still going to be valid? Yeah. Uh, the, the Downs one is, is part of the, the new uh, doctor's surgery development. It includes, um, there's two, just for those who haven't seen the detail, it includes two new builds basically. One is 
the, the large new 30,000 square feet uh, doctor's surgery at the back of the downs. There's some internal developments within the existing way of leisure centre, but it also includes the uh, demolition of the, um, the over 60s club and the building of a, a small um, uh, supermarket there, together with the uh, chemists and flats above. And so the additions at the downs is the eight flats that are highlighted to be above uh, those units, um, which form part of that plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got a few points. I think some of the, uh, the ones I probably need to, to put forward myself when it comes to the consultation. But uh, uh, can I start with the consultation? Um, it's the, the method that's going to be used. Uh, uh, one comment that I've had is that it's not necessarily that people want to go to an exhibition or anything, but they want to see what other people are saying at the time. Um, because it does inform you if you know what other other people are, in what comments other people are making, so that you're you're not commenting in isolation from other people in the community. So I'm wondering if we can think about how that might happen. I know some surveys you can see what other people are saying if if they tick a box to say that their comments can be available to others. So that was just one point. Um, a couple of other things. I, I note that um, although we cannot uh, obviously request a, a, dual of a dual of the railing, uh, but we, it does say in the plan that nothing should not be electronic. We're proposing it should be uh, wet to wet should be used, but we're also proposing that we give to the last regulation 14 to have hard copies of the documents available um, at various places like the library, like the doctor's surgery, like the tourist information. So if people want, want to look at some piece of paper, I, I have great difficulty doing things without looking at the paper. Um, so they still have they still have an opportunity to, to see things written, written down rather than electronically. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bernard, looking at the chat. Um, I've got two points to make. One on behalf of um, a constituent who was unable to be here today. It's very much about the viability of the Dane Valley project. But there are concerns that although we have a reduced number of um, houses which rely on the Dane Valley project, there are still considerable concerns about whether the planning, the practicalities, the pollution, the um, flooding risk would actually ever allow that to be a, um, a viable option. Um, I'm happy to stop there and ask that if I'm allowed to ask another question on another subject. Thank you. ACOM um, has issued a report which is in the public arena uh, which addresses all the constraints. Therefore, they've all been identified. Um, what they haven't been uh, is they haven't been identified in terms of their extent, and uh, ACOM is therefore carrying out a second survey, um, which will accompany the one carried out by Scotia Gas Networks, uh, which was completed uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and is still going through the internal process of, of verification before being. Released. I've seen an early draft of that, uh, and it's an extremely substantial document. Um, and uh, uh, the owners of what used to be called Sapphires of Seaford carried out uh, a topographic and geophysical survey of their site. This is the land rear of 6466, which is the road that is accessed beside number 64 by that ramp. Uh, so we have an extensive geophysical uh, uh, survey which identifies all the chemicals in the ground for a significant part of the site. Um, similarly, with individual planning applications such as the one made by the Trek by Yvonne uh, and the one made by Jerry Ori for 5153 um, Ratchington Road, um, there, are, there are desktop uh, studies done uh, of their sites as well, which has been submitted in the planning arena and therefore in the public domain. Um, the uh, um, purpose of this second survey is to enable a financial feasibility uh, to be carried out because all, 
conditions can be remediated, it's whether they can be remediated economically, yeah? And whether there's a sufficient return in the land in order to cover those costs. In order to assess that at the outset, the ACON report was made available uh, to uh, a registered social landlord of some repute, uh, Guinness Housing Trust, uh, who've been in the business of uh, providing social housing for over 100 years, and in uh, at the forefront of, of, of urban regeneration. They have told me that there is sufficient land value to deal with remediation and to, do, uh, to, to provide a, a, a sufficient return uh, to the owners. Maybe not as much as they expect, but nevertheless, a sufficient return. Uh, and we will have a financial viability report as part of the second ACOM report. Uh, and that will be, we hope, here by Christmas. So, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the view, uh, as advised of the steering group, um, was that uh, these are, uh, uh, the Dane Valley is a, a reasonable um, proposition for inclusion in the neighbourhood plan because all but two of the owners have, have signed up to it by putting their hands in their pockets and paying for part of the second survey. That is unprecedented. They have not acted in, in a unified way uh, before. Yeah? Um, and they are, they are waiting with bated breath on the, uh, the reports as well, because this is the best deal in town. They will not get a better opportunity in order to do it. And so my advice to the steering group, my advice to you, uh, based on my experience of regeneration in urban areas, for the past 30 years is that this is doable, it's eminently sensible to do it, uh, uh, because it's an area of Seaford that needs regenerating and it is entirely possible. And it saves building on greenfield sites. Objection, Madam Mayor. I believe a member of the public should call in this um, activity without informing the council. Lady at the back. Oh, no. Could you please put your phone away? Yes, sir, Would you please put your phone away? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor. Um, what does this stand for? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's too much. I wanted notice of that question. <laughs> I mean, I could get my phone. Uh, I, I could do my phone. Put your phone away. No, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Am I correct in saying your name is Charlie Grimble? Sorry? Charlie? Charlie Grimble. Grimble. Is it G-I-M-B-L-E? L-E. Thank you. I'm not on LinkedIn. No, no, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, want to come back to the um, This is um, about an issue a little bit um, closer to my heart and comfort zone, which is about the health issues which are um, described on page 39, paragraph 6.37, which have been recently updated about the much welcomed health hub as um, announced recently by Lewis District Council. My concern is that I, as the chair of the health stakeholder group, don't recognise this paragraph as an accurate description of our position. I haven't been consulted and I'm not aware of any other members who, of this community who've been consulted about the information. And I feel unhappy about the factual issues, and um, particularly the assumption or the implication that the, that the activities of the stakeholder group have caused the District Council to borrow £17 million. I don't think we can claim that in any shape or form. But my main concern is that there is there seems to be an assumption there are massive expansion in the services to be offered to Seaford, and that is simply not the case. What we have is the Lewis District Council have raised, have, are offering to borrow a great deal of money to build a new building on the site that they already own as a property development, and they are intending to rent this for the life of the building to the CCG. What we are missing, this is the political commissioning group for Hailsham, Eastbourne and Seaford. What we are missing, and I have done my level best since I've been able to read this, 
to get some sort of formal message from the CCG about their plans relating to this new development. And I'm afraid I haven't. So what I've done is I've cobbled something together that I think is about right, um, hopefully is not going to be too contentious. The health stakeholder group sponsored by the Town Council, in that we meet here, and I, I chair it, I myself being a medical practitioner, so hopefully I can understand what these people are saying, involves town councillors, CCGs, primary care managers, healthcare pro providers, East Sussex uh, County Council, social care workers and patient representatives. And the aim of this group is to promote and enhance health services for all age groups in Seaford. The difficulty is that different patient groups go to different places for their care. So that pregnant women and unwell children tend to go to Brighton, whereas medical, surgical and mental health difficulties and emergencies tend to go to Eastbourne and may have to be transferred even further to Hastings. In addition, counselling, rehabilitation and therapy services, as well as basic diagnostic investigations such as scans and x-rays, are very, very rarely available locally. Both the GP surgeries in Seaford and the community clinics have been reporting that their office space is full to capacity, affecting staff morale, recruitment and retention. Multidisciplinary working, which is required for increasingly complex and frail patients, including both health and social care, is adversely affected because of this lack of space. And in order to ease this problem, the District Council recently secured this £17 million public work, work loan, works loan to provide a health hub in the enlarged buildings, as we've talked about. At the time of writing, there are no plans for additional health services in Seaford, either now or in the future. This has simply not been announced. The 21 GPs are the GPs who already work here, and the minor operating uh, operations are those um, performed by GPs. There are no plans for extra consultant services or extra diagnostic services in the town. That is a commissioning issue, it has not been announced, and as far as I'm aware, there are no immediate plans for that. Aspects of the proposal, such as the effects on town centre activity, patient transport, traffic flow, parking issues, and the loss of green space related to the building are yet to be explored, and it's hoped that there will be a public consultation in order to allow these important issues to be talked about. So I'm happy to give this form of words if we could amend that, that small paragraph because I think it is potentially quite misleading. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, can, I, can I come back quickly on that? Um, I, Sandy, I, I don't disagree with, 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 with some, some of the comments you've made. Right? What I disagree with this with, with, the, with the conclusion of the ending. The, the, and that's to say that, that, that there are no plans or there are no proposals to bring in additional services into the new health um, sense of the new health health of, and that that is that is that is that's incorrect. The, 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 there are ongoing discussions taking place, and I think I think I think it will be it will be wrong, and I think it will be preemptive for us to, to say that that there that, that there are no plans. Uh, what 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 what, can, what cannot be denied, and I think we should just stick to facts. And, and what cannot be not denied is that th there's an issue of lack of space in, in the town. The, this new centre will will at least address that, yeah. and that uh, as part of that, they, they are looking at our our services 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 will be reconfigured in in, in the future. Now, uh, and so I, I, but I think but I think to, to start going into, to, I think you, you, your last two paragraphs I, I don't I don't, I don't agree with. I think that's that's becoming slightly as I almost say, almost, almost, um, politicised. But that that, that is that is that is that that, that, is, that isn't. Necessary, that, that, that's, that's not necessarily correct because there are ongoing discussions between the town council and the CCG and the GPs as to what what will take place, what, what will be provided in the new building. Just that we are not party to, to those discussions at this stage because they are commercially sensitive. So I think um, if we can if we can take that take that last paragraph off, I am I I I, 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 I see no reason why that, um, I can't support that. Can I just say you said the town council, then you meant the district. So the district council, yeah, sorry. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't pretend to be experts in this area. We thought we were um, accepting advice as to um, what the, it was appropriate for the report to say. Now, if councillors are uneasy with the wording of that, but 
so be it. But we're not experts. Um, so we need to have something that uh, councillors are happy with. Um, I'm very conscious that people around this table know a lot more about this than we do. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if the councillors who know a lot about this would like to get their heads together and come up with an agreed paragraph or two, absolutely fine. But I'm very, I'm very conscious. Lots of people have said to me, well, what additional services are we having? And I say, well, I think we're having some, but I'm not quite sure. So it, it all mirrors and, and smoke screens. So, and if there were more services, that a lot more people would be in favour of it. Because at the moment, I'm surprised how many negative vibes I'm hearing. And I was expecting to speak to say, what a great idea, you know, we're moving forward. Can I suggest this? Can I suggest that, if I may, I'm, I'm cast away for myself. So I'm, I, and anybody that's interested can tell you, um, put me in get, get, get our heads together and I agree some form of words. Is, is that okay? <coughs> Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you've got to bear in mind that this is written at the time. At the time it was written, that situation, things may move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as they move on, so the plan would it's evolve plan. and it would be updated. Yeah. I don't think we've taken recognition of that at the moment. Um, right, I want to raise the. Um, uh, Recommendation three about um, East Sussex County Council Homefield um, Road. Um, want to um, say this or probably sell it to um, to Pounds. Well, I, um, James kindly did a link to the survey East Sussex County Council did, and. Um, 1,220 completed the survey forms, 640 were as couples, so it makes like 1,860. A third from Rother District Council, a third from Wildon District Council areas, 12, only 12% from Lewis <coughs> District Council, which obviously we come under, 11% Eastbourne and 8% Hastings. Um, so uh, LDC, but six percent planning uh, to move to specialist housing for older people. So people, residents who filled in, six percent are planning that they will would move to specialist housing. So I went on, and uh, and I went on to the NHS listed uh, nursing care homes and there is two seeability homes in Seaford. There are 23 nursing homes which give approximately 528 bed spaces. And uh, we have 12 assisted living apartments, flats. Uh, three, three of the um, uh, blocks are owned by LD LDC. I didn't get the time to um, sort of analyse how many flats we've got for assisted living and I think as a town we have got more than our fair share and I think to have um, another site um, going towards um, uh, care homes and plus put an extra strain on, on our doctors and uh, I propose that if the town clerk wouldn't mind <laughs> writing to East Sussex County Council and sort of give our case that, you know, to... I, I should emphasise this came up in the blue as well, yeah. because the, um, up until yeah. within days, uh, we we believe this was available for housing. And to find out at the 11th hour that uh, the, the County Council were in negotiations to sell it as a care home, uh, came as a shock and I did raise it with the director when I met him at a conference re recently and he said there will be for it to be a care home that will have statistical evidence to back it up well our research seems to indicate the, the opposite um, so it, it is a perhaps a, a piece of convenience but we, we certainly with the neighbourhood plan 
it, what we've got to accept is this piece of land will be developed. Um, and in terms of the uh, strength of the neighbourhood plan, it would certainly be better for everyone if it was housing rather than a nursing home. And, and the other issue is as well that we know from, and I'm sure the health group know this, that the more nursing homes, the more older people homes you have in the town, the more strain there is on the services. Um, you know, it's a natural consequence. Uh, I am aware that we already have people moving to Seaford to go into nursing homes who've got absolutely no connection with Seaford. It's just that there's that many here. Uh, and then we take the responsibility for the care in terms of the impact on the GPs. Um, so it's it's not a positive move at all. So you know, I think if, if you want us to write um, to the County Council and challenge that, then of course I will do and make that part of your recommendation. I think I must comment on this because uh, it's not just people that are moving into Seaford because they're elderly and they want to come here. It's our own elderly people that end up in nursing homes and care homes around the district because there are not enough nursing beds in Seaford. So, you know, you know, and I've got personal experience of this. Now, I can understand exactly what you're saying. Unfortunately, whoever, if it was a care home that bought this land, they would probably make it into a very high-end one and charge a fortune. So our local old people would not be allowed at all to go there. But I do think we need to stop saying that it's just all incomers that are taking these, you know, because there are a lot of elderly people in this town who, when it comes to the point where they need care and nursing care, cannot get it locally. And they end up all around the district, miles and miles from home. So please, can we just not keep saying that, that it's all outsiders coming in and using our services? Yeah, I take the point, but I also know that um, people have gone outside the town when there's been empty bed space within the town. That I have an experience as well. So it's the cost as well. Yeah. I think we've gone over our 10 minutes. Oh, we've so. <laughs> um, just, just regarding um, sort of staying at home for again, which and obviously this care home is kind of the different types depending, I'm not sure the county council specifically said to walk in that place. Obviously, that particular establishment, they're not thinking of knocking it down, it's in converting it again, as it already was a previous care home, residential home for, before White House, wasn't it? So it was one they used before White House was developed. Well, that details, it, all, the, all I can say is we're in uh, contract talks to sell, sell the lands to mm -hmm. a care home provider, so it will be, as you said, mm -hmm. it will be private uh, care home, it won't be, and I accept the point that you were making, that the, the social care homes, there is a shortage of, yeah. but this is not what this will be, it will be a private home, yeah. which are the, the high-end, more expensive ones, mm -hmm. um, which we really have a lot of in the uh, yeah, but the, the, the planning application has come after we've done the sale, and it's changing. It's not even a change of use. They could demolish and rebuild, or they could refurbish. I don't know. That would be up to the company. I would imagine if it's a private care, they'll demolish and rebuild. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is probably a selfish. But I will make it anyway. First time, thank you very much. I, I think I, I read your proposal about. I mean, you're talking about um, environment and transport kind of linked together, and I, and I saw your recommendation. I think like that, which is that are we referring to uh, Appendix Six, um, and, I, and I thought it was a bit. Well, I thought maybe you've missed an opportunity there because if you're building two, nearly two hundred new, new new properties in the town, we need to look at how we encourage. Um, at least, uh, if, if, if I'm of transport that is green and environment friendly, and cycling is a very green and environment friendly, and there's nothing here about cycling provision. I mean, sorry, in, in the main report, you, you focus on dual train lines and you focus on the, again, the road transport. But yeah. um, the cycling infrastructure in the town is very, very bad. If you want to go to, if you want to, go to that, so our, our high street, for example, there, is, um, there, there are no bike racks, there are no way to park your bike. So there are simple things that can be done that I think have been missed here to encourage. But no, I, I think it'd be nice to, to just don't neglect cycling 
I just focus on, because I think it's important that we focus on green as well. So just, 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 but don't just put it in this appendix and say, list of things, just, but I think find one or two things to put in the main report mm -hmm. that can be easily be done to improve cycling infrastructure. It would be nice to see that. Am I allowed to say something? Mm -hmm. It's yeah, to do with yeah. cycling, because I was on the transport, transport. group. Yeah. And we did talk about cycling, yes, and it's nearly there. two years ago now since we've produced our bit of this, but nothing and in I there. can't remember it, yeah. so I, but I thought yeah, there but was something about cycling, there's the dual railway line and various other things. I mean, I can, you know, we did definitely talk about cycling, yeah. I don't know what ended up in there, because I can't remember, so long ago. Yeah, it's but in the appendix D. Let's put it in the main oh, report. Yeah, one or two simple yeah, okay. recommendations. It's in the main, the main report. report. I I personally be, be happy to do that. On a structural point, we the way we try to operate, although it's not always been accepted this way we're trying to operate, is that fo focus groups lead and the focus group put forward suggestions and the focus group are the ones that decide what should go in the report. And that's what happened with, with the transport. I personally agree with what Sam's saying, but I have felt it inappropriate to over attempt to overrule what the transport group are, say are saying. Now, I will take that away and I will contact the chairman, Peter White, of the transport group and say that we want to put, um, strengthen the recommendation as far as cycling is concerned and see whether he is content to do that. Are people happy, happy yeah, with that? Yeah, I'm sure we will be. See, things have moved on in the two years since we did it, haven't yeah. they? Let's yeah. face yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I, think, I think we need to, you know, conscious of time. I think it's been debated well. So um, I think I'll um, bring in standing orders again. Everybody's agreeable. And. Uh, <laughs> That's one thing, is that all right? Mm. I just say one thing. Does, does the National Cycling League go through Seaford? Yes. You would never know because you'd never see any of the signs. Anyway, that's all it's always in the sign. You know, you'd really never know the National Cycling League is going through Seaford. I've never seen the blue sign that says National League, whatever the number it is. Route 2. Yeah, <laughs> have you seen the signs? I haven't seen any. Anyway, that's it. That's it. Thank that's you. That's it. Okay. Now, uh, no, more, no, more, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Chair, where you are is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you're looking to, to adopt the plans, but there's two, two amendments to be carried out outside of me, which is to strengthen the cycling within the plan, mm -hmm. and also for the councillors Adam and and Weymouth to come up with the wording for the health side of things uh, to add into the plan. Um, or to replace what's there, I think, yeah. Uh, and, and other than that, the, um, the, as per the recommendations, um, just to throw a spanner in the work slightly, um, the is a stage of the next stage is that once we um, go to, if we go, sorry, this didn't matter, if just, just an additional recommendation I will make is that when the report back after regulation 14, that the, we're only required to report back on any changes rather than presenting the whole plan again. Um, we'll put the whole plan on the internet, but that you accept that the next report, so after regulation 14, we'll just highlight any changes to save us having to present you with a big bundle again. But you can, <laughs> but you can see the new plan on the internet. I just don't want you to think that we've made that decision without your approval. Uh, point order, please. That's fascinating. So, just with your stupid chair, mm -hmm. uh, can we just get a clarification regarding the unfilled place? Again, because I think that's nothing was mentioned about it. And that, that, is a, that is the, the like number a, three recommendation. Yeah, it should be left yeah. in, I think. Yeah, it's so it's in. It is a recommendation, number it's three. In it. It's stayed in within that. Well, no, the recommendation is that we make representation on it. Uh, we'll see what the outcome of that is, mm -hmm. and if, if the, I mean, you could you could recommend we leave it in the plan. Sorry, I'm not supposed to speak. You could take things. If a site, you put a site in the plan, you can take it out. Okay. If you don't put it there. in, you can't add it later. Okay. Then. Sorry, it's best to keep it in. Okay. And then take it out. Later. Uh, I think you're absolutely yeah, right. Sorry. Thanks for that. 
So I think, yeah, if, we, if you're going along with recommendation three, that home field place remains in the plan as well, which will increase the housing numbers beyond what's recorded tonight by... 19. 19. Thank you. Thanks, it's, it's just what we said earlier about the consultation. Were we going to have a physical consultation, were we going to leave it to, to the steering group to make a decision? If they give us enough information about what we said tonight, with the, with, with the home built place, the deep group plans, and everything, is it worth having a two hour session somewhere? As part, it, it, within that particular within that particular sort of uh, time frame with the, um, uh, with, with the consultation, with, with what has just changed? Or shall we leave that with, with the steering group and, 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 and with the chair to, to make a decision on that? Be in title of it. Yeah, leave it with. Because they, they're working with the heirs as well who will give advice on, okay. on, on yeah. They've done many times. So. Yeah, they'll know they've got much Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so it's those three plus when we were called back, just report back on changes. Yeah. So can I have a proposal? Or, um, to the, to all three together. Yeah, if you do all three together, and uh, just to emphasize, number one would be with the two additions highlighted for cycling and health, uh, as discussed. Um, and number three would be with the addition that home field places, home field was put back in the plan. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown? I'll check it out. Thank you. Can I have a show of hands, please? Thank you. to say that Seaford Community Partnership are taking that project forward. Okay. Um, I've, I've recently had discussions with Keith about that and uh, with, with the, the refund, we, uh, the Community Partnership give us some, what I was talking about earlier when we talk about North Weir, they give the council some corn feed money to help us with the, the show project as well as getting, we've got a small grant as well you know, with the partnership. Uh, we, we refund in that corn feed now too, but now that we've generated the income from the project, uh, which the partnership are going to take forward to deliver the uh, floodgates. Um, so they're going to open the floodgates for that money basically. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, just on that point, um, we have <coughs> the um, environment agency meeting on Tuesday and the proposal for the suggested gates was brought up there and that went on to a very, very long debate about the sort of main sort of pros and cons of every aspect about the gate. So that is certainly being debate and um, discussed. There was a lot of concerns about the design and a lot of questions. Also Tony was there as well. So that is certainly pending, um, being looked at. <laughs> Councillor Borman and Councillor 
Yeah, uh, just uh, 10 D for me, Madam Chairman. Um, I've just felt that perhaps that might be best to be made for the new council to decide because of the uh, terms of our decision. Come on, Tim. Hey, sure. I'll just put in a lot of formal reports. So I'll come back with you. Thank you. First of all, I want to express concern about how slowly these beach halls are selling. Um, I would remind councillors that the plan was to send, sell 20 beach huts, build and sell 20 beach huts in 2017, and build and sell another 20 beach huts in 2018. So at the end, nearly at the end of 2018 season, we have sold 10 instead of projected 30 to 40. And this has a remarkable effect on our cash flow and what we can do for the residents as a result of that. I'm very, very worried about how slow these sales are going, particularly now we're nearly at the end of the season and we're unlikely to sell any more to April next year, and I think that really has to be taken into consideration. So that's my main concern. Secondly, the Gavian Wall, because when the Gavian Wall was, well, well the wall was first mooted, it was not in the Seafront Development or Improvement Plan, it was part of the Bonnestet Beach Huts. And I've gone back to the original papers of March 2017 to check this. It was described as a concrete wall that was going to be built in two strips. There were going to be um, £2,000 out of each of 20 beach huts to pay for one, one half of beach wall up to £40,000. And we were talking about two strips i.e. £80,000, but it was not out of general budget for the improvement plan, it was out of the costs and therefore the profits of the beach huts. This seems to have slipped somewhat and has become a major extra budget item, because not only are we now talking about a Gabian wall instead of a concrete wall, we are talking about a Gabian wall that may be able to, to make some sort of income because it doesn't have memorial plaques on it, but we're now talking about three strips of £120,000. And it seems like this entire budget is just mushrooming out of control in a way that we haven't really talked about. And lastly, I would also ask, to, um, with a view to, to, to ecology and environmental issues and what's been um, mentioned in the neighbourhood plan, is that if there are going to be electric points for concessions, could we not have or work with East Sussex County Council to have recharging points for the cars on, on the front, the electric cars, as a very clear message of our green, green um, wishes and aspirations <coughs> in the Seaford. Um, and also the issue of beachfront showers, because that was, if we're going to have refill points and taps, um, there was, um, I have the minutes from, from March 17, and one of the things that we particularly voted on was that we we um, rejected the showers in the Martello toilets, but we um, suggested that we would like three sets of beach showers. So could we not have three sets of beach showers with, with the water supplied so that we could have the beach refill um, water taps as well, so that we could have two things put together as a very clear message of our environmental friendly attitudes and also minimise the cost. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, Mary's if I answer those, that uh, first, I, I think that the fact that the beach showers aren't there is, I must admit, is an omission. Uh, I haven't picked that up. Um, they should be in there. So um, there, there is a minimal cost for those. I think we, we estimated about 1500 each. Uh, so the impact on that is not significant on the, the budget. I know you have concerns about the budget, just said. But the impact is not insignificant. So they certainly can be included. Uh, and that, that is an omission on our part, I apologise for that. Um, the, the budget, yes, the budget has changed and, and I think uh, we, we always expected it would. Um, but the, the key that has underpinned the whole project throughout is that the, the, the capital project doesn't cost the taxpayer any money and, and that's still retained, that integrity is still there. And at the end of the project we're still predicting that there will be a capital receipt from the, uh, the project and there is in the region of, um, well, we've just taken another three and a half thousand off it, so it'll be now 70,000 uh, surplus at the end. Um, sorry, four and a half thousand. Um, the, 
the, the point about the beach huts, I think it was always going to be a difficult one to predict how quick the beach huts would sell because it's never been done at this scale before, other than when the council sold some beach huts in 2003, but sold them at the price that the cost to build rather than the market value. So unsurprisingly, they were sold very quickly and resold even quicker um, by residents who profited from that. Um, so we, we were absolutely set, set that we weren't going to make that mistake. Um, the the beach huts are selling, but they're not going to sell at a rapid pace. We've got to accept that. I think we've got to accept that if they were selling really quickly, you're selling them too cheap. If they're not selling at all, they're too expensive, but they are selling and people are making inquiries. Um, and they will continue to sell, and I'm sure of that. Um, the, uh, we can only sell what people want to buy though. And I think there's two things that will make a significant difference for next summer. One is uh, we are looking to put a temporary toilet in the area of the, yeah. the, the beach. So I think that will make a huge difference for people buying them. Yeah. Um, that will then be made permanent with the concession there. And secondly, we're looking to get the electric supply in there as well, as I mentioned. So those two things, together with the water that was recently installed, uh, so all three of them, I'm sure will increase the pace of sale uh, next year. But we're still a victim of people, you know, when they buy, they buy, when they don't, they don't. Uh, but we're not in a position where we're out of pocket. Uh, you know, the council is, is in profit at the moment from the project. So we, we, we're not in a position where we're desperate to make the sales. Uh, the council is in profit at the moment as the project stands. Um, the, the point about the electric points on the seafront, the, the plan includes purely things that we are in control of. Um, we're not in control of the highway, but that doesn't mean we can't ask for that. So I, I agree again, we can certainly uh, make that representation to uh, to the district and county council. It seems to be a grey area who's actually doing it in the area. But we can certainly make that representation. And it may even be, it's a good suggestion, because it may be a means of reducing the cost to get the electric to the other side of the road as well, if we can do it together at the same time then it may be we can save a bit of money by doing that, so that's a good idea. Yeah, so, um, following obviously from, from the Council of Weirmouth's comments, I was a bit concerned about the order of the phases, because I'm concerned about, we've got the beach, beach huts we said haven't sold so well, so I'm concerned about putting in another 20 beach huts until we've actually got the infrastructure in place. Um, so, like the Warnies putting in and this suggestion about the Morning Star Cafe and toilets, whether they should, the phases should be moved, the items in the phases should be moved around. So, we, we've got something more of a selling point rather than doing it the, in the order that they're in at the moment. I think we do make reference to that in the report that we may well come back to you. Yeah. If we have a capital receipt from elsewhere where we're able to say that we've now got the money from another source. <coughs> And we were talking about earlier tonight, you know, it could be a land sale. Um, that we may well come back to you and say, look, we feel it's the time is right to build the, con the concession rather than the beach huts. But the reason the beach huts is first is we require, without that money coming from another source, mm -hmm. we require the profit from the beach huts sales to build the concession. Mm -hmm. We can't build the concession until we've got profit from beach huts. Yes, okay. I, I accept your point, which is why, which is why we've given ourselves that wriggle room by saying, if, if we're in a position where we haven't got a capital receipt from elsewhere, so we can um, bring the, the concessions uh, construction forward, then we will come back to council and ask to do that. And that will then mean that happens before the next beach is built. Does that make sense? Oh, I think it makes sense, right. but it just doesn't seem logical to put more in parts without. I, I get where you're coming from, but um, it's, it's having the money to build the concession without more beach sales. We haven't got that money, so we physically can't do it. Thank you, Councillor Hollywood. We've got a, a mobile concession down there that looks really quirky, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I've just uh, a question we going back actually. Um, the VAT on those beach huts, how, how much did we pay, or did the towns? Start with VAT, really 20%. So, how much did that but Was it actually charged in the initial sale of the yes. beach huts? Yeah. Well, it, it was because we, we, when we did all of the processing, we processed it and paid the VAT when the first sale came through. So it was even a matter of days that the first lot of VAT, or our monthly return was done. So yeah, we processed it very quickly. Very different to what I recall. Okay, Alright, well I, I'm happy to talk to yeah, the finance yes, team about that. But yes, my understanding, I don't deal with that, but 
My understanding is that that VAT was paid straight away. Um, you know, we, we, we reclaim VAT on the construction costs and then we pay VAT on the income, which you're required to do uh, on the beach and sales. My understanding was that the VAT wasn't added to the um, initial sales of the three trucks. Um, did the council absorb that VAT? It, yeah, it's in these figures here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Following on from Councillor Wayland, um, I have um, I've, I have serious um, con um, reservation that uh, the whole strategy is based on selling 60 beach shots. I don't think, based on our um, track record of selling 10 in two years, that we're selling that one that was about 18 months, well, it was well over a year. And the 12 months ago, we were selling the same thing that will be sold in the summer. We, and we've got to someone that we haven't sold any. We, haven't sold we couldn't sell the first page up until the end of last summer. Okay. So we've only had okay. one summer of sales. Okay, so 10 in, ten in one year, yeah. 16 in six years. I mean, yeah. I'll give you that. <laughs> so um, my concern though that is that um, I, I think the strategy should, should be based on something that is actually achievable. Um, and I don't think 60 page of sales right now is achievable. I would rather see that it's a strategy that is based and something that we can achieve, if we can then sell 60 pictures, that's, then we, we, we're in. But I, I, I don't feel comfortable supporting something that I know right now isn't achievable, and no one and no one can convince me that that's the case. And I might not actually be sure now if I want to see a seafront blighted with 60 pictures, but that's, that's a different argument. But can we sell 60 pictures? I don't think we can. I don't, I don't honestly think we can, and therefore I cannot support something if I don't believe it, 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 is, it is deliverable. The intention is not to sell 60, it's to sell uh, 50. It's to build 60. Yeah. Um, but the reason we've done this in phases rather than years as well is to allow that to happen. So the, the council will always be in profit or break even at any given time. So that means that we're always delivering, but within our means. We'll never be at a point where we're out of pocket going forward. Um, the, the, the big bonus would be, as I alluded to with Councillor Honeyman, if another capital receipt comes in from elsewhere, then that will clearly speed up the whole process. But this is a plan that delivers at a pace, but not at a pace perhaps you'd like to see. But with the extra money coming in, we've got the plan ready. As soon as the extra money comes in from another source, from the land sale, we can then say to you, we're ready to do the concession, are we happy with that? The other option is, of course, that whilst we've got this plan, if we were to try and look for someone to invest in the concession and build it themselves, there's always that opportunity as well. But without this plan, investment wouldn't be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. So there is two options open to the council going forward, other than just waiting for this plan to take its time and deliver it as we get the profits in from what we're doing. And every year, we continue, the revenue is increasing from the sea front. So that revenue is creating more money to reinvest. So you know, we've got 10 extra people paying ground rent now that we didn't have before the plan started. And we're going to have more as the programme goes on, which gives us more revenue as well to reinvest in the whole program. Sure. That's okay. Yes. Just now about the beach house. They, they have been slow, but it's been, um, it's been consistent. We haven't had a big rush at the beginning of the year for them. Sort of had a beach hut every month, every other month. So, um, unfortunately, I had an eleventh one which we thought was going to go through recently, which didn't in the end. But in the last two weeks, I've had two more serious inquiries. So, it is slow, but it is steady. And I really do believe we will sell them eventually. Mm -hmm. I was just going to um, Sorry, it's cancelled. Oh, sorry. Yes, I was wondering about um, phase three. You've got the cost of 20 beach huts. <coughs> 400,000 and the same with uh, phase four, same price. How much in the future are you thinking of phase three and phase four are going to occur? And will the prices still be that? Still be that? Will there not be more? Yeah, good point. Um, what we've done is we've left the figures the same because um, it, it, these are phases rather than years, so we can't predict inflation because we don't know how long it will be. Um, so what we've done is we left the figures the same, but obviously if we if the beach cost more to construct, then the, the selling price will, will reflect that. 
So we will, the balance will remain the same. The differential between the sale and the income will be the same. It's what we're working on that basis. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just, just regarding the, 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 um, the new cafe and, and the toilets down there, I mean, does that mean that the, the salt cafe might be going to hold it run, or is that completely independent if that was going to be um, really, really developed? Because it's not many, many miles away, is it? Yeah. Um, so I just wonder your, your take on, on that. We, we're going to do a review of the salts improvement plan as well, and we'll, we'll include that within that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we will probably. In the meantime, we make having discussions with potential investors to see if that can be part of that proposal. But that'll be a decision for the council to decide uh, if you want. But that was the original intention that that would be built by private money. Um, so it's right a the sums. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they go kind of cafe and all that. Yeah, it? that was the, the intention. Yeah. So we need to make more inquiries into that. That's quite a big piece of work. Between we're not looking at more now. We probably look. Well, we know we're looking at the new council before we. Bring that before the council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So, uh, what's it called? Can I just ask one final question? So, uh, yeah, um, yeah. we, we're going through a we're going through a trend on predictable economic um, time right now. You know, <coughs> no predictable recession. Um, just looking through your faces, can I just have an assurance that if for any um, any unforeseeable reason. Um, we're, we're not able to pursue a phase. We're not going to be financially as a the council. So we don't want a situation what happened in, in Spain, for example, where people were bought, bought land, but obviously couldn't build on it because, they, because there's a recession. So yeah, that's not my concern. Yeah, we, we will keep this project so that we're always in positive rather than negative. Yeah. Okay. So, take the floor. Okay, David, and then we'll have a proposal, a seconder, please. Council on the course to the strategic plan adopted by the council. Mr. Chair, um, everyone's asked about colour, hasn't it? Yeah, that's good. Um, we've, we, as you can see, we've made progress on, on most of the items that we set in the strategic plan uh, not too long ago. Uh, a number have been achieved. Um, what I've the change we made in this is that we've, we've made some uh, objectives so that they're annual rather than um, time driven. So things like uh, securing a, 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 a satisfactory uh, audit, which we've just done um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, which I didn't mention when I did my report earlier, um, are made annual targets. Uh, the vast majority of the targets have, have made have, have the same. Um, but we've, we've just made the, the timelines more realistic, bearing in mind the finances of the council. Uh, you know, we can't do things unless we've got the finances and the staff resource as well. Um, and, you know, the land sales, I can't reiterate enough that we just discussed earlier, are absolutely crucial to, to delivering on the majority of those uh, strategic objectives that are outstanding. Uh, happy to answer any questions, Chair. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, on page 18, talking about um, locating and securing alternative accommodation. I, I just wondered, what was the outcome of the property on the salt, the one that's just up the room? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
to you now is that um, we, we do the budgets um, to, to so this is to help us set the budget um, any changes that they make we would then be on the understanding that they, that they need a budget for us um, that's why we bring it in now at this time of year every time so that you can determine the budget I, I appreciate that but the new council won't be determining its own budget either which is a bigger decision um, yeah. you know, but that's that's the bit nature of the beast of, of how our council changes over the year, and uh, unfortunately. Yeah, it's the same. We've got first year, we've got constraints. The new council. They can, they can bring it forward. It, the good thing is that this is still uh, the good. If if so desired, it could come back to the the first meeting they have after May, because you will be within you will be beyond six months <coughs> if if the so desired. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I've got. Uh, I, think, I, I think everyone's had one off. Yeah. Yeah, yes, they've all great. Thank you. Page 90. Yeah, uh, 10E chair is um, just simply as a result of uh, now. Uh, making a couple of amendments to their um, recommended uh, uh, standing orders. It has a knock-on effect with our, um, our financial regulations, so it, it is just to change the wording as set out in the report uh, to reflect the, the guidance from NALC uh, that we received since we adopted the financial regulations only a few months ago. Um, that's why we haven't presented the whole document to you, Chair. Okay. Right. So you're recommended to approve two amendments to the Council's financial This is, uh, we've just presented this with a few changes as a result largely to the GDPR. There's not significant changes, Chair. Uh, happy to answer any questions, hopefully. Uh, it's recommended for approval. Councillor? Thank you. I, I don't know if this is the correct policy to bring up under, but um, the concern, a real concern I've got is, you know, obviously, what's occurred this evening is the in public participation that we no longer um, note the names of the, um, the, the speakers and I, I've got an enormous concern with that. Uh, I, I did actually go to a, a new Hagen Town Council meeting earlier in the week and they asked whoever's speaking, would you like your, your name recorded? And yes. most people do. You know, there's no record. I, I just think the, the history, the documentation for referring back, you've just got respondent A and respondent B, and I don't think it's right, I really don't. I, I think from, from both sides that they go and see, and also people, I think, like a record sometimes of what they've said in the meeting. So I, I really think we ought to do consider that choice of now, not now recording anybody's name. I'm happy to, uh, we, we followed the guidance from Nalcon on that. Uh, where we stopped recording the, it's only, I think it's only been two meetings now, probably mm -hmm. tonight and last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we followed the guidance from now come up, but I accept, and we, I've had a discussion with somebody else about the way New Haven are doing it, uh, not that New New Haven are doing it, and I agree that is a way forward. Uh, we could, um, and it would mean that what the you said being a meeting would be changed to say that if you want your name recorded in the minutes, please say so when you ask your question. <coughs> And I haven't got an issue with that at all because that covers for GDPR. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we can, we can quite happily do that. Most people do give their names. The give is, yeah, um, 
I mean, the irony, of course, is that we, we don't, we don't uh, hide the, uh, the name given on, on the, the recording that goes on the internet, <laughs> which is covered by GDPR as well, yeah. technically. So, you know, I think, I, think um, I haven't got an issue with that at all. And uh, if the council are happy with that, yeah. I'll check the policy to see if it does make reference within the policy. I'm not so sure I think it, it does. Does it somewhere yeah. buried in there? <laughs> I'm happy to change that so that if the consent we were recorded in the minutes, and we'll change the wording of what the mayor says at the beginning of the meeting to reflect that. And that's also all committee meetings. It is, yeah, sorry, all meetings, yeah. Councillor Brown. Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. I support what Councillor Lowe is saying, and actually I did bring this up when we originally discussed this policy yeah. some time ago. And I really do think that we should give people the opportunity to have their name included in the minutes if they wish. Yeah. But we can't demand it. Can't demand it, no. That would be inappropriate, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Sure. Um, just, just regarding GDPR with petitions, obviously, obviously we had a petition tonight. I don't know, obviously, that particular situation, you did in the main name address and who we are on the signature because it's going. Otherwise, it would be a pretty, pretty, pretty impossible to, to, to know because they are meant to live in yeah, we, you know, the, the, the brief criteria. We, we, um, we didn't publish the uh, actual no, petition no, 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 names that, no. for that reason, yeah. Just the heading and told you how many people have signed it. Well, I just, just wonder how you obviously don't publish that. But for the record, eventually, will you destroy that, that, that petition? Yeah. 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 It's recorded in the in the, the reports now as well, what we were seeing. <coughs> so it is documentary evidence of it. Um, at some point, yes, we would destroy that. Excellent. Just one final thing. I've been on um, um, two or three courses regarding the uh, General Data Protection Act. And uh, one council in particular in London was fined £70,000 for divulging information to a third party. It's not so much how we receive the information, the most important thing is how we protect the information. So we're not at liberty, and it comes to here, to divulge information we see from one particular person to another. For example, say, such and such body said this. They're not at liability to say that because the information has been passed on without that person's knowledge. So all I can say to you, Councillor, uh, is that when you receive the information, it's entirely down to you that you keep that information safe. And you're not at liberty at any time whatsoever to pass information to a third party without a particular person giving you express um, uh, instruction to pass that information on. And we're all at risk here of putting the counts at risk of some very, very large and significant fines. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, can I have a proposal that the, um, the doctor revised data would be added and... Uh, I'm not sure it's covered in this policy. Um, I'm not I sure. I think it's in another policy, actually. Is it in the public participation? Possibly, yeah. yeah. It's somewhere, yeah. yeah, I'm happy to change what the mayor says and, and, and look at that after the meeting. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's under the policy now. Okay, so if we take them two together, can I have a proposal? Yeah, I'll take them two together. Can I have a proposal? Okay, so we're there. Seconder, Elton, and Shahan's, please. Um, Freedom of information request procedure for adoption. Mr. Chair, we do receive the uh, FOI request, um, and, and this is the procedure we follow. Um, it's recommended that you uh, continue with this procedure, Mr. Chair. Uh, it seems to work quite well. Um, here's a couple of additions, just uh, minor additions, Chair. Okay. So, uh, any questions? Hurry up. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, to present the revised freedom of information publication scheme for adoption. Um, the, the publication scheme, as you can see, we, we present um, an awful lot of information on our website. Probably more than most councils are. Mm. I did have occasion to look for something today on for the council's websites, and I was even some of the bigger councils in the country. I was amazed at the lack of information some of them present on the website. Uh, we we do have a wealth of information on there, and that and that's represented in, in what this uh, publication scheme shows. Um, we can refer people to the website when they ask for information, which saves us time and money, and that's why we have it on there, so we can refer them to that. Uh, but it's largely repeated what we have before. Okay, any questions? Can I have a proposal and second it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Awards policy for adoption. Sure, this, this is a policy that's drawn together really to um, confirm practice. Uh, we've never had a policy uh, for the civic awards, but we felt the time was right to do this while we've got the set of councillors who are well versed in what we do, rather than bring it to the new council who perhaps wouldn't be so well versed, it depends on who we have as councillors. Uh, there's a number of people in the room who have been mayors, so they're more familiar with this than anyone. Uh, and I'm sure you'll recognise what's in that policy as being just a reflection of current practice. I've just got one comment. Um, that the person receives the award once. Is that the Dom Navy one? No, that's uh, the mayor's awards. Up to when I was first mayor, that was always. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't sort of. You know, it keeps them all special. Yeah. So you're talking about? Both, well, both actually. Yeah, all of the awards. Yeah, yeah. all of the awards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's one of you see, one of the awards. Yeah. That applied to the mayor's and the and the Don Maybe award. Sorry. That applied to the mayor and the Don Maybe award. Yeah. 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 But if, if I mean, if that person has received a mayor's award in the past and is continuing and it's felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Objections so to that. So the, other people don't. Sorry. Right. The, the person, the addition is that the press, the recipient can only receive okay. a award once. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. When I created the Don Maybe Award, it was intended that it could only be awarded once yes. to one person. Yeah. So it never got four years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was always, you know, used to be with the Mayor's Awards, but I know in recent years that it has been duplicated. Right. And I think it just keeps it special. If everybody's agreeable, that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's no maximum number of awards that a mayor can give, is there? Uh, uh, unless I miss something, I don't think there is, is there? It's, it depends on what the mayor thinks at a given time, isn't it? And who, who's deserving, so on. It's just whoever's mayor has to bear the, the costs of the, the award. So, you know, I mean, if you say yeah. 20, it doesn't have the right. Well, yeah, you have to make a judgment, don't you? As, 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 that, that, but then at the time, we didn't yeah. have that decision, didn't we? Because there was one particular year, a lot of deserving people, and then maybe not maybe not quite so, so it just depends. Unless, unless uh, members feel yeah. it's should be done differently, then they should have the right to make that decision. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So okay. with the addition of chair. Yes. Uh, can I have a proposal and second uh, uh, um, to adopt the civic awards policy with the idea that the person receives the award once? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second to Councillor Ms. Freeman and Marvin Sharp hands, please. Thank 
Chapter 16, uh, to present the draft child and medical adult protection policy for adoption. Chair, yeah, this is a new policy, and this one's uh, come about as a result of um, grant applications we do, and where some ask if um, if you have such a policy in place. Uh, so this is to make sure we have got that policy in place to progress with some of the grant applications we're looking at. But obviously, it does have uh, a need anyway. But, um, we, we, we want it first now so we can progress some grant applications. Any questions? Okay, we're we'll proposing second to adopt the draft child and available adult protection policies. As I need to thank you, Councillor Clear. Second up, Councillor Clear. And third, Shard Lines, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. meeting timetable for the council and committee meetings in 2019-20 municipal year. I think you've got an update. Yeah. Chair, the, um, the updates are on the table when you came in was slightly amended. There was a slight uh, error in the, the dates on the end when that was circular. Uh, my apologies for that. Um, the, um, the difference between the two options largely is that we're very aware that at the beginning of a new council um, there will be a lot of training and induction going on and that will require extra commitment from, from the volunteers who become councillors. So in, in option B what we've done is we've, we've, we've actually moved the finance meeting to take place immediately after the council meeting on the 20th of, of June. We, we're not proposing to have a goal from the new committee meeting in in the first quarter, and uh, same with the community services, um, which gives us the, the, the time to get um, the training in. As you can see, over the first um, six months, uh, there are uh, eight training sessions uh, in total. Um, so the reason for giving you that option is to enable not to have so much going on uh, in the initial induction period. And we've also got the plans to make it a requirement that members have to be trained in planning to be on the planning committee, finance to be on the finance committee, uh, and personnel to be on the personnel committee as well. So those training courses are, for some members, essential if they want to be on those committees. Um, so it, we, we're trying to give the, the, the training every opportunity to take place chair with option B. Happy to answer any questions, members may help. Yeah, I have to say I'm not at all happy with option B. I, I don't think it's at all right that there's not a community service this meeting until November, and I think that's ridiculous. And likewise, we've gone from the area to the to have uh, oversight of, of, of that um, and not have it left for uh, four months. So I would vote for option A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we should go for option A and um, just um, maybe just spend the training because those will be uh, elected over four years anyway, so you can spend the training um, over a six month period. Not really, because the uh, as I said, the, the standing orders are changing, which you agreed in the last meeting, so that uh, to do a personnel committee, you have to be trained, to do a finance committee, you have to be trained, uh, and same with the, um, the, the planning as well. So those three have to take place at the beginning, same as the initial induction to explain how meetings work, because we, you know, we don't know. That's the one thing about doing this job, you have no idea who's going to walk through the door after the election. We could have everybody here who's all got lots of experience who wouldn't need all that training, but the chances of that are zero really, uh, in reality. It will be a lot of inexperienced people there, chances are. Um, so we will need to have top heavy training at the beginning to, to be effective really in what we do. I think um, what, what tends to happen in terms of district and uh, ACE Council is that, you, you yes, once there's a requirement, the requirement is to be trained if you, if you, if you sit on a committee, you can actually join that committee but don't attend the meeting yep. until you've had your training. Yep. So I, I can't hear, yeah, so I, I think maybe that night you was near way. So you can be a, a member of the personnel, but you just don't, you don't come to the personnel meeting until you get that personnel training. <coughs> I'd rather do that than delay 
golf meeting, uh, which is quite important because for, for three or four months. Uh, East Grinstead, uh, two elections ago, 20 councillors, new election, 20 new councillors. You have committees where nobody could sit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, you've got the planning training down for the 4th of June, mm. but you've got a planning meeting on the 16th of May. Yeah, I know. And that, that was unavoidable. Uh, all we, we can hope for is that uh, we're going we're gonna to word the standing order so that it does allow for some leeway, leeway after the AGM, after the election. Um, but equally, you know, we haven't worded the standing order yet. Uh, but planning is one way, we've probably got no choice. However, we are hoping that we will get some experienced councillors coming forward again. We've already done planning and training uh, in the past. But it could be like East Princeton, where we have 20 new councillors. Um, in which case, we'll have a bit of a problem. But just to fill the meeting, will not we? Yeah. Well, what we do is we probably then look to do a training session before the meeting on the 16th. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we'd have no alternative yeah, other than to do that. <coughs> Idea, so we, we could bring a training session forward on the 16th if you wish, um, to <coughs> six, but the trouble is it'll be 6pm and, and I know that for some councillors that's the problem, um, you know that, but it's either that or the committee meeting starts at 8, you know, that, that's the other way around you can do it. I'm happy to do a training session prior to the session on planning on the 16th. I think the question I would ask the council is which way would you prefer that? A 6 pm training or a 7 pm training followed by an 8 pm committee? It's up to you. I think that's a very committee it says if it's quite an important committee, whoever chairs it at that particular time. I think there's a there's a, quite a gap there that we should be we should do one within about three months after the new election. But you know, I mean on, on community on services today. are supporting mm -hmm. well, not today, there is a community mm -hmm. services in I, July. Okay, I, I I would like to recommend plan B with the addition of one services meeting within three months of the new council. Okay, thank you. But we've got on the table plan A at the moment, so we'll have to be voted on. That's so, a, a six or seven and then a committee an hour after. Mm -hmm. Training seven with me, I think the first one of the six. Yeah. I'm happy either way. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I should have said that plan B we, requires less time from councillors, less meetings. You know, instead of having them on different nights, you can find the stuff in those time. Help. Sorry. Just let the men go first. Yeah. Sorry. That is going to be a problem no matter what. Um, the, it wouldn't be on the it would be on the principles of what we can the very basic rudiments of, of the powers of the council in terms of planning its role and the basis upon which we can make objections or recommendations or relevant planning considerations. That would probably be as much as we could cover in that session. I would still uh, be pretty intended to hold the session on the I uh, can't see this, uh, the date there, the one in the June, because we would have somebody from outside come in and do that, and that would be a more comprehensive uh, two hour training session with somebody from outside, uh, which we would book in uh, to do that. We get these bookings in early as well, so that we know we're going to get the people here that we want for those sessions. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So I think you've got a proposal for AI on the table yeah. anyway. All I'm trying to clarify is the time for the training session on the 16th. Is that 7 o'clock or 6 o'clock? You said 7 o'clock. 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 So, we've got a proposal for option A on the seconder, and with the planning meeting to start, um, planning training to start at uh, 7 o'clock, followed by the meeting at 8. Are the proposals and seconders um, fine with that? Yes. Yeah. Um, can I have a show of hands, please? Once again, <coughs> okay. that's carried. I'm not going to try and pretend I, uh, I know better than Sussex Wildlife. We employ them to run the nature reserve because they're the experts. Uh, so I think, you know, from the officer's point of view, our recommendation is that we adopt the, the plan um, and leave it to the experts, Chair. Yeah, um, I'm more than happy to propose what the first one was. Thank you. I think we also have the provision to end the, the concession if we need to, because you know we could be in danger of, uh, for instance, the pancake fields. Uh, we have a few problems with those financially at the moment, so we should have a, 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 a enough leeway in that to end the concession if we need to. All, all of the licences allow that. Yeah. 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 If I could just say about the, the prep guy, he's, he's not on a, a attended concession, he's on a year-on-year -year basis at the moment, so he's outside of this. Okay. 
option to extend it for a further two years after the three year period. Clearly that has uh, two advantages. One, it means there's less administration costs because we don't have to re-tender every three years, we do it every five. Uh, and secondly, because of the level we're at at the moment, um, it, it would be foolish to do so because I think it would only go up, quite frankly, uh, if we were to re-tender. Um, we, just to add as well, we, we have had, um, and we are going to do some sort of press release on this, um, because I think it's important to get the message out there. We've had three claims recently made against the council, but because we have a uh, rigorous inspection regime in place, we've been able to defend all of them successfully. Um, and we, you know, we, we're we confident we can continue to do that. And I think it's important we get that message out. One, to stop the uh, people who are just chancellors trying it on and hoping that will settle and just, just to get rid of them. But two, it does take up a lot of time to defend the case. Even, mm. even though you know you're going to win, yeah. you still have to collect all the evidence and deal with the insurance company, etc. And we had a Freedom of Information Act request around an insurance request as well. So it does create work. Um, but I think it's important to get a message out that actually we have a robust insure, uh, inspection regime and we defend our claims against us very successfully. So the recommendation is that we continue the policy for an additional two years, Chair. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, yes, sorry, yes. Um, so I presume this is the building insurance, if I'm, I'm, I'm right, not just um, public liability insurance. Yes, um, okay. I, 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 I remember very well that we used to get a, a report of all the buildings and, and what we've insured them for. I would, I would have they may have been useful to help me make a decision tonight, make sure that we're, we're adequately insured. Is there a separate report that does that come out? Yeah, you get that every year, uh, the annual meeting. Okay. Yeah, it's there on the publication scheme as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the information pack as well. Yeah, no, yeah, so, uh, I mean, the, the insurance, what we're talking about tonight is that the insurance is like for life, nothing's changed, I guess. In terms of the evaluation, uh, is it this thing? I would, I would, I would have yeah, seen. There's, there's, to be honest with you, there's, during the year, there's several changes during any given year. So, for example, in, just off the top of my head, in this year we, we've added new machinery on that we bought at the golf course. We've taken the old machinery off the golf course. Uh, we will have added on uh, the beach huts we've constructed in the last 18 months as well. So, there's always variations. Mm -hmm. um, that change, yeah, but the, the, the policy itself is the same, um, but we don't, we, we make additions and, and take off as well, because now and again we get rid of something, you know, I'm trying to think, I'm sure there's something we, we got rid of recently, so that reduced uh, what we were doing, um, but I can't remember what it was, it's too late. Okay. I'm not trying to be nitpicky there, I know it's quite late, but just take an example, if the, if the, the pictures have been insured for I don't know, ten thousand pounds. We will know right now. What we've done is we approved the insurance, but we don't know what the elements for this insurance policies are. And I'm, uh, my question was, if there are changes in um, as or whether whether it's a new building we've been insured, yeah. then I would have loved to have known that before I say yes, I'm happy that we are equally insured. Because I presume what the, the objective of agenda number fifteen is to say. We as councillors are, sat are, 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 are satisfied that we are adequately insured, and, that, and that's why I was asking about why do we right. well, to that. answer your question, you've delegated that responsibility to your RFO. Okay. Um, it's their responsibility to do what you've described, and then report back annually to the, the council in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. All right. So, can I have a proposal and seconder? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.